This Sunday, people in Argentina will head to the polls to elect a new president. The vote is taking place against the backdrop of a deep economic crisis. Inflation rates of over 100 percent have become the norm, and an increasing share of the population is slipping into poverty. Kerstin Schweitzer reports. Every day, 25-year-old Ayelen Torres makes her rounds in La Matanza, the largest district of Buenos Aires. The mother of two stuffs whatever's recyclable into her cart, like cardboard or plastic. She's one of the so-called cartoneros, or rubbish collectors. There are said to be about 150,000 of them now in Argentina. The cooperative that takes the material pays the collectors half the minimum wage. Not much, but it's better than nothing. With the crisis we have in this country today, when you become unemployed, you have to make sure that you have something to eat. And the easiest way to do so without waiting for a company to take you on is to go and collect recyclable materials and sell them to a warehouse. It may not be a lot of money, but you'll have something to eat at the end of the day. 40% of Argentinians are now affected by poverty. The peso is hardly worth anything. Inflation shot up 140 percent in September. Governments have tried time and again to turn things around without success. Ireland's long lost faith in politics. Whoever takes office, I have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning anyway. The point is that we have to survive and keep on working, fighting. The cart is going to be there and I will have to keep on pulling it up, no matter who takes over as president. Ireland typifies a resilience shown by many here. As to whether Sunday's elections will help end the perpetual economic crisis, Argentinians are skeptical. To talk more about this, let's bring in Paola Gandara. She's an analyst at ADCAP Asset Management in Buenos Aires. Paola, 40% of people living in poverty, a currency that is becoming more worthless every single day. How did Argentina get to this point? It's the answer of a very frequent economic crisis that has not been addressed properly for the latest, I don't know, maybe 20 years. Argentina has not grown exactly since 2011, 2010. Inflation has been very high and uh, it's something very, very difficult to fix and also has the main issue, uh, the root of every single problem is the fiscal deficit. And to what do you attribute this kind of mismanagement? What, what are the policies that have gone wrong here? Well, I think a serious government that has not implemented the necessary reforms that the country needed in order to fix the main issues, the main problems, such as, as, as I mentioned, the fiscal deficit. Okay. Is that the crisis has not been addressed properly, like thinking about an implementation of the economic program, tackling every single thing and resolving the main economic reforms that the country needs of labor reforms, fiscal reforms, right. even political reform. Okay, Paula, stay with me for a moment because I want to look at the people who are promising to implement the reforms that Argentina needs. Sure. Let's take a look at the, ca at the candidates who are promising to turn the country around. So first of all, we have Sergio Massa. He is the current economy minister and he's from the embattled ruling Peronist party. And he's known for being a dab hand at making deals. Then we also have Patricia Bullrich. She is the leading conservative candidate who's called capital controls, quote, instruments of torture. Finally, the front runner, Javier Millet, a libertarian economist who has promised to blow up the political status quo. Paola, that front runner, Javier Millet, he wants to switch the country's currency from the peso to the US dollar. What impact would that have in the short and the long term? Um, we actually, the country doesn't think, not the people, not even the economists, not even his team is actually thinking that the dollarization is possible in Argentina. Uh, it's like the, his main 
um, political campaign. It's saying, let's blow up the central bank, let's dollarize the economy. But um, we don't really think that's possible at this time. There are not enough dollars, and the country is not in the right shape to go through a dollarization. So we don't think it's going to happen. So you think if he wins the election, he won't be able to, um, you know, live up to that promise of radical change? Exactly. OK. If we look at the situation on the ground, we saw people in the piece there picking up trash just to make ends meet. How are people in the country coping practically and psychologically with this situation? Well, social discontent is rising a lot. People are not happy at all about the current, this current administration. That's why a, a guy like Millet is saying, um, you know, against the casta and let's blow up the central bank, let's rise the economy, let's change things, is actually having an attraction in the rest of the people. That's why he's leading the polls. It's because he's actually saying, let's end this situation. Yeah, That's sure. Millet's reason, exactly. Yeah. So people are really ready for this change. Now, Argentina also has a huge amount of debt to pay to the International Monetary Fund. In the summer, we saw China step in, offering a currency swap so that the loans could be paid back in yuan. Are we likely to see more of this? Yes, of course, because it's, this is about Massa and the current administration that's trying to strengthen the central bank international reserves are actually $25 billion, net liquid reserves are negative. So the central bank is very weak and is already intervening very heavily in the effects market in order to keep the, the, the dollars at certain levels. Beyond dollarization, what other policies are being proposed to turn Argentina's economy around? Well, um, we don't know much about what <clears throat> Millet is asking, but we know a lot about what uh, Bullrich may have uh, uh, working on, such as a more of like a stabilization program on targeting the reduction of fiscal deficit and implementing labor reforms and fiscal reforms. Let's look at a more positive outlook then as well. Um, Argentina has huge potential. The country is one of the biggest producers of lithium in the world. That's a key component in electric batteries. What needs to be done to harness resources of this kind? Well, it will take time for Argentina to receive dollars on the back of the, you know, trading lithium and, uh, and the rest of all those minerals and energy producers right now. But um, I think the, the, the most important thing is to have uh, this uh, legal security that, the, that there will not be strong changes on the legal front. No? So a like, serious government that clear rules for the companies in order to produce, to import, to export, that will be very appealing. You know, for now, you know, right now, all imports are restricted in order to preserve the dollars in the country. So uh, a very important step would be to lift those controls. Is, is this likely to happen, though? Do you have the sense that this election really is going to mark a turning point for the country? That's, that's of course. Yeah, my main point is regardless of the candidate that could win the election, uh, one of the main uh, problems that we locally discuss is the implementation risk of this uh, stabilization program. Because it's like on the political front, Argentina is changing a lot. Uh, before that, uh, used to be all the Kirchnerism and the Macri, you know, and all of them, either Christina Kirchner or Mauricio Macri, are not in the picture anymore. So this is a rebuilding the political story in Argentina. So it's, it's clearly a new area coming on that front. And new negotiations and new alliances will arrive after, 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 after this coming Sunday. So you're optimistic. Am I reading that right? I'm, I'm optimistic, of course, yes. Always. That's, that's good to hear. We'll be keeping a close eye on the election here. Paola Kandara, analyst at ATCAP Asset Management, thank you very much. Thanks to you.